Okay, this sermon is entitled, Seven Ridiculous Things Calvinists Say and Teach. I'd like to open up with prayer. A few verses, all right. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 145 reads, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Now, when it comes to Calvinists, they have a tendency to make God into some divine mystery, or mysterium tremendum, and they render God's word into some giant inexplicable enigma. And... I've noticed that they say some of the dumbest things, and it's not that I've just heard a Calvinist once upon a time behind a pulpit at a Presbyterian church say these things. The truth is, Calvinists recurrently, frequently, and collectively say what I call these Calvinistic platitudes, and the first one is this. They claim that faith is a gift, aka gift faith, and this is a logical fallacy known as the faulty comparison fallacy. Faith should not be compared to a gift. Even in the Calvinistic system, where God predetermines and has fatalistically chosen who's going to be saved before the foundation of the world, faith would be more akin to rape or coercion. And even a gift is something man can choose to accept or reject. So... This teaching is a bunch of garbage, and believe it or not, they use Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 to back this up. Let's go ahead and turn there, and it reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, any simple-minded grammarian sees a problem with this garbage, because the verse says, It is the gift of God, singular meaning that salvation is the gift. Romans 6.23, John 4.10, Romans 5.15-18. through 18. It doesn't say, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. They are the gifts of God, meaning that faith and salvation are the gifts. It's referring to one thing as being the gift. If faith is the gift, then salvation can't be the gift, because it says, it is the gift of God. You'd have to pluralize the if to make this verse support Calvinism. So faith is not a gift. And according to Calvinism, if faith were a gift, then only certain people would have received that gift and the rest of mankind would be eternally screwed. Number two, they claim that repentance is not a work. It's something God grants. Now, obviously, they're teaching a works-based salvation, Roy's, repent of your sins. Otherwise, they wouldn't say that it's not a work. Because anyone in their right mind knows that repenting of your sins is a work. So the fact that the stupid Calvinist has to claim it's not a work, it's something God grants, just like faith, proves that they have a hidden agenda, an ulterior motive, and that they're not teaching salvation by grace. The truth is, is that faith is the only condition for salvation, not repentance. Number three, they claim that some people believe in Jesus and aren't saved. Now, you would have to be an absolute reprobate to teach this. The unsaved James White has said this many times, claiming that the Pharisees believed in Jesus, but it didn't count because they were going to stone him. And another place these people go to in Scripture is John chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, and it reads, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name, when they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. Now this is what's known as a non sequitur. This is where the inference does not follow the premise. What does Jesus committing himself to all men have to do with people believing in his name? Commitment is is a discipleship issue, whereas belief is the only condition for salvation. And according to the scripture in John 3, 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life, anyone who believes on Christ is saved. To think that you can believe in Jesus and not be saved means that you're an unsaved reprobate devil who doesn't believe. Number four, the stupid Calvinist says, why do some people believe and others don't? 
Is the believer better, smarter, more spiritual, or special? Well, the answer to this question is simple. The Bible says that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The unbeliever in this case may not have been exposed to the gospel. The Bible also teaches that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Maybe the unbeliever has not heard the gospel. Or maybe they're just stupid or they're prideful in trusting in their works and they don't want to believe. But see, being a believer in Christ does not make you better, smarter, more spiritual, or any more special than anyone else. This is a stupid argument and it's a bunch of garbage. Number five, they claim that free will is us saving ourselves, and then they also say that we don't even have free will. Now, this is also a logical fallacy known as the personal incredulity fallacy, or the argument from incredulity fallacy, because just because you don't believe something doesn't make it true. We have free will, like it or lump it. And how is free will saving ourselves if it doesn't exist? This is what's known as the fallacy of stupidity. And free will is not saving ourselves because the only condition for salvation is faith in Christ. And anyone who has faith in Christ is saved. It's no more meritorious for one person than it is another. And this argument also comes from thin air. There's no biblical basis for any of this. This is just a stupid accusation the Calvinists make towards people they don't like, who are non-Calvinists, and who are actually saved. Number six, they claim that you can't get saved at any time. It's all in God's timing. Well, you can't be saved without the gospel, but after a person has heard the gospel, they can believe it at any time. The reason why these stupid Calvinists say this is because they just want to make salvation into a mystery once again. Number seven, they claim that regeneration precedes faith. And to be technical, regeneration takes place instantaneously and simultaneously upon faith. But yet the Bible gives a chronological order in Ephesians chapter 1. And it does not teach that regeneration precedes faith. It teaches the exact opposite. Let's take a look at verse 13 and it reads, In whom ye also trusted... After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. If Calvinism were true, you would have to read something like this. In whom ye were regenerated by the gospel of your salvation, after that ye believed. Then you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. But see, according to the scripture, you hear the gospel first, then you believe, and then you're regenerated and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So this teaching is a bunch of crap and it doesn't make any sense at all. And neither does any of Calvinism. None of it makes any sense. It's all man-made garbage. And it's all there just to confuse people and to teach people a false gospel of works. And it's to rob believers of their assurance. That's all that comes from Calvinism. So watch out for these stupid unsaved Calvinists and watch out for the garbage that comes out of their stupid mouths. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.